Hey, welcome back everyone. Today we're wrapping up work on the uh, F1 gearbox. After the last video, I did uh, continue to struggle with the actual controller logic uh, for several days until a viewer, Armando Armijo, graciously uploaded a, a perfect example of how to position uh, shift barrels using modular math. After implementing his algorithm, I was able to delete over 100 lines of code and actually addressed uh, some other scenarios I hadn't even thought of yet. So thank you so much, Armando. Uh, now we're ready for the fun part. Let's actually uh, test this thing. Okay, so as you saw in those clips, the uh, simulation software is far from perfect. Um, I had to fight some more with uh, the tuning coefficients and the algorithm that I was using for the simulation and how fast it was running. Um, but I believe most of the tuning issues are down to the actual lag between when the motor is given a new target RPM and when it actually reaches that target RPM. Um, I think there's a bunch of ways to, to address this, and uh, I'll try to fix that you know, potentially someday. Uh, now with the rev match downshifts and uh, the throttle cut on the upshifts, the, the shifts are much more reliable. Uh, I do get the occasional missed shift and I lock up the gearbox. Um, and as you could probably hear in the higher gears, the uh, sliders clacking on the uh, gear teeth is pretty loud. Uh, this is down to a couple of things. Uh, first, the shift forks really need to be a lot stiffer. Um, there's just, well, one's a little bit of a tolerance issue, and then the other is just the PLA is too flexible. 
Um, something like uh, Carbon Pet G or Carbon PLA would help tremendously, or of course an entirely different design for the shift fork, but it wouldn't be as authentic to the uh, real gearbox if I went ahead and did that. Um, the second is the actual tolerance between the uh, sliders here and the gear teeth. Um, that's around a millimeter, which uh, any misalignment of the shift fork or the slider itself can cause the slider to catch on one of the teeth. Uh, I think the easiest solution to this really is, since this is just a model, is just to increase that distance and add some uh, kick out, which is the taper um, on the engaging edge of the actual dog tooth uh, that's used to basically prevent the sliders from an accidental engagement in a real gearbox. Um, but I think increasing that would definitely help. Um, the shift barrels actually have more than enough torque now. Um, it can actually bend the shift fork tube uh, during a miss shift. Uh, realistically, that extra power wasn't uh, needed after the uh, power supply issue with, was uh, fixed with the battery. Um, so I may mess with taking those off and see if I can get the shifts to be even faster. Um, right now, they're about uh, seven one hundredths of a second. But I know prior to the planetary gearboxes, I was getting them down around five hundredths of a second. Also, if you noticed, we can't really go to red line in sixth and seventh gear. Um, part of this is the tuning um, and the vehicle simulation uh, has some issues with the actual aerodynamic loads being too high. Um, and some of it's the actual motor, the uh, little uh, 65 turn motor that's in there, um, not having enough voltage or uh, amperage to spin it fast enough. Um, and then the other part's uh, vibration. Um, at red line, uh, the input shaft is spinning around 2000 RPM, but the actual main shaft itself, uh, will, when it's engaged into sixth or seventh gear, is hitting between you know 5000 and 6000 RPM, which uh, just causes too much vibration. I mean, this is not a, a balanced assembly by any means. And uh, there's a large speed differential between the speed that the sliders are rotating, which are rotating at that 6,000 RPM, and then what the actual dog teeth are rotating on these lower gears, like first gear is only rotating at 1,000 RPM because it's half of what the input it is. So that's a huge differential, a six to one differential between the slider and the gear itself. Um, which causes extremely loud clacking. And if any of the sliders uh, catch on the uh, gear teeth of the lower gears, it can cause them to break off. Uh, so sometime in the future, I plan to come back and do an episode trying to uh, resolve all the issues that I've found. Um, but for now, you know, I'm just really just happy to have this thing up and running. You know, as I've mentioned before, uh, I plan to upload all my designs for this uh, to my GitHub. Um, which I'll uh, have a link to below. Uh, but just know, you know, all the parts were designed to the tolerances of my particular uh, 3D printer. So expect to test and alter parts to actually fit your printer's tolerances. Um, and then just to answer a few uh, viewer questions that I've gotten, just to understand, you know, what it takes to build this. Um, it's about 350 to 400 hours of actual print time if you do it all right the first time. The print materials I used were just PLA, PLA silk for most of the metal looking parts, and then PLA plus for like the black parts. Um, I used, I believe it'll be about three kilograms of PLA to print out all the parts just one time. Uh, for the printer, I used about six kilograms with all of my uh, test parts. This has been an awesome process. I've really enjoyed it. Uh, it's been awesome getting all the feedback from all you viewers, and I'm excited to really uh, launch into some other large projects that I have uh, kind of in my head right now. Um, I just want to thank everyone. Um, the next video, I will uh, focus back on testing the uh, 3D printed uh, screw charger. Uh, I hope to have a couple of other projects uh, kicking off in the next uh, several weeks. Uh, so if you like this video, please hit the uh, like button. And if you want to see more projects like this, uh, please consider subscribing. Thanks.